Sunday, November 29th, 2020. This is the Church of MMA podcast. My name is Tabor Cragen. My name is Mason Knight. This is episode 49, Smith versus Clark recap. After that, you guys know the drill. We jump into some MMA news and then we talk about the Hermanson versus Vittori preview show. Uh, Tabor, where do we begin? With our social media accounts, Mason. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at the Church of MMA. Guys, if you aren't following us, make sure you go and do it. We're posting funny memes, clips of the show. We're trying to make you laugh. Hit us up. Absolutely. Uh, check out our YouTube channel, too. Uh, well, we give you guys the numbers every week. We're up to 365 subscribers on YouTube. So a little bit of a gain. We gained about 15 this week. So uh, we appreciate every single one of you. And uh, if you guys want to go get some church merch, like this shirt that I'm wearing here, or this cup, this beautiful little mug, you know, with the, with the emblem. Uh, we've started to design some MMA gear uh, that you guys can go check out in the link in the description below. So Yeah, absolutely excited for that and the future of that because your designs are fucking awesome, dude, Thanks, by the dude. way. So it's 100% Thank Mason you. on that side. Congratulations on your uh, successes there. Thank you. Yeah. So well, let's move on to this. Uh, I mean, I'm sure everyone wants to hear... Everyone wants to be talking about this Tyson Fury fight, but we're going we're to save this for MMA news. We'll of get course, into that, yeah. but we have to start with the UFC card that did happen this weekend. It did. It, it did kind get of overshadowed, got overshadowed completely. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I don't think yeah. anybody was really talking about it, mainly because the main event did fall out. Curtis Blades was te- did test positive for COVID nineteen. Yeah. Very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate because it was, I mean, it wasn't going to be the most entertaining main event ever. No. And we had talked about that too. You know, I mean, with these two different stylistically, this is a terrible matchup for Derek Lewis. I mean, yeah, really if we're is. being completely honest, unless Curtis Blaze was to, was to stand and bang. I mean, you know, not, I mean, I think majority of MMA fans look at this fight and go, okay, Curtis Blaze is going to take Derek Lewis down the first chance he gets. And he's going to try to wear him out for three rounds or five yeah. rounds rather yeah. uh, for a main event. So. Yeah. And that's probably what would have happened. But, you know, it didn't happen. And we got Anthony Smith, Devin Clark. But one thing that did shock me when the news came out that this fight was the main event, I wasn't shocked at the opponents. But it did shock me that it was five rounds. Because last time this happened, Anthony Smith argued for three. Apparently, both men wanted this to be a five-round fight. They wanted to fight. And you know Anthony Smith. I mean, we'll talk about the Lionheart all day. Uh, he, He is a... People's fighter, he's a people's champion, you know, as far as just being that guy who will always step in, who will always fight. I mean, this guy always fights three or four times a year. Uh, you, you can't deny the man's resume. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? uh, and he said, you know, I deserve to the fans. The fans deserve a main event, and that's why he decided to take this five-round fight, you know, which is pretty big, man. I mean, you, you got to think about it. Like, he's coming off back-to-back losses. So, I mean, this is a big deal in his career. Mm-hmm. And to take those two extra rounds on short notice just shows it's a testament to who Anthony Smith is as a fighter. Mm-hmm. And, and Paul Felder was saying, you know, if you're, if you're being serious with this in your training camps, you're fighting more than three rounds anyways. You know, you're training. Training oh, five yeah. round fights, even though it's a three round fight, just so you get that extra cardio. So he says it should be easy for Anthony Smith, and Anthony Smith agreed one hundred percent. It said it was so. Didn't didn't need to go five rounds. No, <laughs> definitely did not. Uh, this there, fight there was ended a clear, early. There, there was a clear advantage with the grappling realm with Anthony Smith. Yeah, uh, definitely exposed Devin Clark. I mean, that was just fa- the craziest thing too is he didn't even have that arm tuck uh, tucked for that for that triangle, and he pulled it off. It was tight enough to to submit him. Yeah, didn't even have to pull that arm across. Uh, but but uh, hats off to Anthony Smith. He looked great. And again, we talk about this every time. Where you know, in, in previous episodes, like I have talked about how Anthony Smith, I do not believe that he will probably ever fight for a belt again, ever for a title. But he's still that guy. He's still an elite fighter. He's still a contender in this division. And he's a guy that you have to get through. Like for a guy like Devin Clark, this was such a huge fight for him. Because if you were to get mm-hmm. through a guy like Anthony Smith, who has fought for titles, who has had multiple five-round main event fights, this would have been a huge deal on his career and a huge notch on his belt. Unfortunately, he just wasn't able to get it done. And again, we go back to it time and time again, but there are levels to this game, and you can really see them in fights like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm just super impressed because I didn't know that Anthony Smith was the type of guy to have such a good ground game off his back. I mean, when that transition did happen and Devin Clark did get on top, I was like, oh, no, Anthony. Yeah, you <laughs> this did isn't not want another good. Clover Textera no, situation. No, no, because I, I, that's what I thought it was going for a second. But then when he locked that up, 
fuck, man, that that squeeze was really elite. So, you know, big ups on Anthony Smith. I mean, what do we do with him, though? I mean, it no, wasn't I knew Devin you were gonna Clark. ask me this question, like, 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 and it's just like I, I don't. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, man, but it's like I, I just I. Don't you don't know. know. I yeah. don't know. I mean, uh, you know, he he just be an unranked guy, right? Mm -hmm. He's sixth in the world right now, or seventh. So, at, I mean, do you give him a, give him another up and comer? I guess, dude. Like, I say you I don't give him know. like a Johnny Walker, a Misha Serkinov, you know, someone in that top ten, yeah. top fifteen range. He deserves he deserves a number by, his and I think that fight. would be good for Johnny Walker's career too if he could mm -hmm. get a, a win over a guy like Anthony Smith. As I say before, you know he's very uh, pivotal in the light light heavyweight division. So yeah, that's not a bad fight. Let's go with Johnny Walker. Yeah, Misha Serkinov. That's not a bad one either. But I like that Johnny Walker fight a little bit better. Yeah, if I'm being honest. Yeah, or Magomed and Kalayev. I mean, there Ooh. you got people, dude. You got and Goliath yeah. coming off that Ian Kutalaba yeah. knockout. Yeah, yeah that he deserves be, a big fight. And Anthony Smith is fight. that big name for him. So you know, I mean, he's tied for number six in the world right now. That's true. I don't know why the fuck they do that. They do the tying thing. They yeah, do the tying they do thing. That, yeah. They do that all the time. Anthony Smith is seven, uh, but no. Yeah, Magomed and Goliath, you know, he's number 11th in the world right now, and just coming off that big win against Ian Kutalaba, that first round KO. That's a brilliant matchup. I like that a lot. And you know Anthony Smith, too. Again, I'll go back to it. The guy's game. He always wants to fight. He fights three or four times a year, and he's done that consistently throughout his career. So I guarantee in two or three months, he's probably willing to take that Ankalaya fight because he took no damage against Devin Clark. Here. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Two or three months, maybe even sooner. I'm sure he'll probably want to take the Christmas holidays off absolutely. with his family yeah. and stuff like that. I'm guessing probably March, April. Yeah, you know, just not? because you you take that month of December off, most guys do. You know, the UFC is wrapping up on the nineteenth. They're not having a fight until uh, you know January after that. Mm -hmm. so. And they're going to be needing main events. I mean, they're still scheduling these fights out six to eight weeks in advance at times. But with the COVID, you know, with these COVID situations, main events are dropping like flies. So you know, Anthony Smith is one of these guys you could always keep into a co-main slot and slide him right back in there. So, exactly. Yeah. Anybody. I guess really anybody in the top. He's a 15. company guy. He's a yes yeah. man. And, He'll fight anyone. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like it's a good thing. Like he's a yes man. He's willing to take in that spot short notice. So, yeah, I like that matchup. Let's move on to this Josh Parisian versus Parker Porter real quick. Talk about this. This was a heavyweight fight that went the distance. Uh, Parker Porter with the upset here at a plus one ninety on the Vegas odds. What did you think about this fight? I was uh, a little shocked at the output, to be honest. Uh, that's they the were, same. That's the same analysis I had. Just as well. swinging. They were like, swinging the whole wild, time too. like flyweights. Yeah, <laughs> like nonstop. Output not giving a shit. Yeah, they gassed pretty early in the first. Yeah. I would say, you know, first couple minutes they gassed, but they were still swinging. It didn't matter that they were gassed. The shots were flying. I had fun watching this fight. I'm not so. So did I. I had a lot of fun, and that's the thing with heavyweights. Like, look, we don't mind if you guys gas. Like, we mm -hmm. get it. You're carrying around all that weight. That's a yeah. lot of work. Yeah. But don't don't have it in Ngannou, Derek Lewis situation. I know they weren't gas in that scenario, but where it's like, <sighs> okay, you're getting your breath back for Ngannou's two and a half minutes. soul was and, gassed. Yeah, I know. No shit. Uh, <laughs> which we forgive you now, Ngannou. You've had some great fights since then, <laughs> and uh, I will never talk shit to you because uh, I'm terrified of you. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> Nonetheless, you know, this was a very fun fight. I, I had a good time with this one. Yeah. And Parker Porter looked real good, man. I thought he was landing the better shots, especially those body shots too, man. Just those combinations. And uh, he ended up pulling this one out pretty decisively. Yeah, I love it when you get that good old mind fuck where you get a couple real fluffy guys and their <laughs> cardio actually impresses Holds you. up. Yeah. <laughs> impresses you. So It's nice. I love it. I love it. I was really impressed with them. So uh, big ups on them. I mean, they're on rate guys. I've never really heard of this Parker Porter, and I feel like he was kind of set up against this Josh Parisian guy for a big knockout. Mm -hmm. And when you and get an upset like happen. that... That's that's a that's a really helps your stock in Dana White's eyes. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about the co-main Mason. This Miguel Baez and Takashi Sato fight. This fight was really really good. This fight was Miguel incredible. Baeza is scary, dude. He's a very dangerous man at 170 pounds, and well, not only is he thick and like really like strong, you can tell mm -hmm. how strong the man is, but he's long and lengthy as well. Long, lengthy, and very quick too. Yeah. Like some of those outside leg kicks that he was landing, and, and there weren't a ton that he landed, but the ones that he did land, I was like, damn, that was fast. Yeah. Like real fast. And uh, this was a great fight, you know. Standing up, it was entertaining and fun, and then you get to that third round that, or, or no, it was the second round. Second or third it was the round? Second round, second with, round the finish, yeah. with the finish, with the finish, with the sub. 
But uh, nonetheless, it was a beautiful fight, beautiful performance. Uh, Miguel Baeza, remember that name? Yeah, he's pretty do- pretty dominant. He really was because, I mean, after he really landed that first big counter punch and wobbled Sato, it really seemed like Sato's output just came to a screeching halt. Yep. And it was really Baeza's fight from then on, and he really pieced him apart afterwards. So I'm really impressed with Baeza. I mean, he, this welterweight division is ridiculous right now. Yeah. I mean, here's it's a fight fun. for Miguel Baeza, the winner of this Chaos Williams and Michelle Pereira fight in the next couple weeks. Man, that's <laughs> yeah, tall that's order. I mean, testing you. It is. Right off the and bat. he's 10-0 and 0 as it sits right now after beating Takashi Sato. So maybe, maybe that's the fight that you throw him. I mean, that's mm-hmm. just a tall task for a guy who only has 10 professional fights. But when you look as good as Baeza, I'm almost okay with that. Yeah, and well, I, I think he's elevated above these guys. And no disrespect, but I think he's elevated above these Matt Brown fights. And above these guys mm-hmm. that are, you know, on their way out, yeah. that are still legends and Legend can still fights. destroy people. But yeah. it's like, I think he deserves that uh, cusp of the top 15 opponent. Why not? Let's just yeah. test the guy. I, I'm, I'm really impressed with him. So, last fight we talk about. Spike Carlisle, the alpha ginger himself, against Bill Algeo. Uh, so... At first, I was expecting Spike Carlisle just to come out like a madman, like he usually does, and he didn't. No, he didn't. So I was a little bit disappointed in him for that, but it was him cutting down to 145, I think, for the first time in the UFC, actually. Yeah, you know, I think it's a little too debilitating. I'd like to see Spike Carlisle uh, be a lightweight, like consistently. Like, that's it. He doesn't need to drop down to featherweight. He doesn't need to cut that extra 10 pounds. Like, this guy can hang with the light. I'm not saying he can hang with, you know, the Tony Fergusons and, and uh, Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor's, none of that. I'm not saying that. But he, he has a pathway in the lightweight mm-hmm. division with some time. I mean, the guy's only, what, 26, mm-hmm. 27? And you could definitely tell he was a little less toned than when he was making that 150 yeah. or the 155 fight he did right. have before. And this guy's an absolute savage. Yes, he is. But unfortunately, he got he got matched up with Bill Algio. And I remember watching this guy in the Contender Series, and he went to fucking war with this British kid. And because this British kid went for a takedown a third round, Dana White's like, that fight fucking sucked. Didn't sign either guy. Yeah. And it was just one of those fights where both guys deserved it. So Bill Algio still made his way back. The other guy who gives a fuck who he is, he's fucked because Dana White didn't like him. <laughs> At one time, like, let's be real. Everyone forgot that guy. But Bill Algeo made his way in, and he looked very dangerous, dude. He's super big and long and lengthy mm-hmm. for 145 pounds. Yeah. He might be the biggest 145-pounder. Like, he might be longer and bigger than Max Holloway. So Could be. I'm excited for his future because he is a very dangerous opponent. He didn't really unload the weapons that I know he does have, but future will tell. Yep. Let's move on to some MMA news now, Mason. Let's get into this good stuff. All right. Everyone wants to talk about it. I'll let you start. Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. Let's talk about the recap. We just did a fight companion last night. Uh, we supposed to do shout outs at the end, but shout out to Logan uh, for being on the fight companion last minute. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we had uh, some good topics that we were talking about. And with our fight companions, guys, we don't just talk about fights the whole time. Uh, we, we have different types of guests on and, and that kind of went down a conspiracy theory. Uh, uh, political route, which was a lot of fun and something different that we haven't done yet here. And we plan to have more guests as we do Fight Companions. Yes. I think that'll be add a new element to this show, which will be a lot of fun. So if you just want straight MMA talk, just go to the episodes. But if you want to uh, venture in to our other other type of podcast, then uh, go check out our Fight Companions. And we had watched this fight live last night, Tabor. Let's talk, let's talk first about Jake Paul versus Nate Robinson in yes. this co-main event because that's when we started our fight companion. You know, wow, Jake Paul, say what you will about this man. He may be one of the most hated individuals, and I got to say, deservedly so. Any video <laughs> that I've ever seen, he's like the biggest cringe monster, and, and he's just, he, to me anyway, and this is just my opinion, he doesn't come across as a good guy whatsoever. I mean, I've heard that like he was looting and shit, and it's like, dude, you're a multimillionaire. The FBI raided his house because he had weapons and shit. It's just like, this guy doesn't come across as a good, wholesome guy. Um, so did I tune in to maybe see if uh, this this fucking dickhead would get knocked out? Yeah, I did. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but everyone Robinson, did. Yeah, everyone yeah. did. But again, great marketing. Mm-hmm. And I'll say this time and time again, love or hate Jake Paul, what he is able to do is get eyeballs on him. And that's how he makes the money, folks. Because he cares, but he doesn't care enough because he's making that cheddar. 
So again, and I was one of those guys who literally tuned in just to see if he'd get knocked out because I wanted to see him get knocked out. But coming away from it, Damn, Jake Paul, you look good, man. I mean, hey, love him or hate the guy. He looked good. He looked clean. His combinations look great. You could tell Jake Paul really trained for this fight. And you know what? I actually, I believe this kid. I really believe this kid that he is taking this uh, seriously. Now, am I sitting here saying that he could go out because we know he called out Conor McGregor? Am I sitting here saying he could take on a Conor McGregor? Let's get realistic, folks. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is like, he is taking his training seriously, and you can tell because he's developing real skills. Or skills? Skills. Uh, skills. 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 Just instantly turned Scottish. Scottish. Developing them skills. <laughs> skills. No, but he is. He is developing skills, and you can see that in the ring because, man, like, he just, in that big overhand right that he knocked out mm-hmm. Nate Robinson with, was beautiful. It was perfectly timed, perfectly placed, and uh, I thought he had a hell of a performance. I mean, wh- what's your opinion on this? Yeah, I agree with everything you just said, but you know what? I just want to see him fight someone that's actually trained more than a couple months. Like a, a retired NBA player. Like, yeah, I get it. He's in great shape, but I mean, you go into a one-on-one basketball fucking match with this guy, this guy's going to dunk on you. He's going to fucking stick his nuts right in your face, but... You go into a boxing ring with Jake Paul, who's been training for the last three, four, five years. I'm not shocked he gets knocked out in the first round. I am impressed with his skills. I'm not going to lie. Do I think he is ever going to contend with any real boxer that has ever spent any amount of time in the gym over maybe three years? I don't know. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Though. I mean, maybe low, low level guys and that's who what, have been training a couple of years, but. And everyone's talking shit about him. Like, oh, he's not a real boxer. He's a fucking YouTube star. Fuck him. If hey. He can't fucking come into the sport. Like, dude, he's doing it. He's doing the fights. <laughs> he's doing the training. He's not just fucking sitting on the couch and literally getting into the octagon. Guess what, motherfucker? We sit behind this desk because we don't go inside the ring. We don't go inside the octagon. Listen to all you people saying he's not a real fighter. That dude is stepping inside of a ring. He's stepping inside, you know, these fighters who step inside octagons if you step into a ring you are a real fighter i don't give a fuck if you love or hate the guy he is a real fighter if you take those steps even nate robinson like people yeah. can talk shit about yeah. him Big he's ups a real on fighter him for fucking he had just balls getting in. he went in there and got in the ring got so knocked out on live <laughs> i have and i'm dead serious man i've gone to so many local events mma and one kickboxing event but majority mma multiple times during the walk i mean we're talking about amateur fights before pro fights people just don't make the walk. Like, and then like out of nowhere, they're like, hey, does someone in the audience want to fight? Because typically there's other fighters in the audience. Like, I'm dead serious. That happens a lot. So the fact that you are able to even get into an octagon or get into a ring and box someone in front of the world is is more than what any of you jackasses online say that, oh, Paul, Jake Paul isn't a real fighter. Yeah, well, fuck yourself, okay? Yeah, is he at the elite... <laughs> Uh, position is like a Conor McGregor or Dustin Poirier or Mike Tyson. Of course not. But he is a real fighter. He is getting into the octagon. And you can't talk shit about him. I mean, he's had, what, two boxing matches or three boxing matches? That's it. Like, when you're an up-and-coming boxer, you fight cans. You fight the Mm -hmm. shittiest fighters that you could find. You, I literally saw a boxing match a few months ago of a female who was undefeated. I think she was like nine and ten and zero, up and coming prospect, future world champion. They're saying literally fought a fucking soccer mom, fought a soccer mom who was making her professional debut, and she fucking got knocked out in five seconds. Well, let's let's think about this too. Okay, in majority of situations, when you are a boxer and amateur, either getting up to the pro level, right? You, As you just said, you take many fights. But mm-hmm. imagine being in Jake Paul's position where you have millions of eyeballs on you the very first fight and the second fight you ever take. Do you know the insurmountable pressure that is? Do you know that you have to be completely on your game? You have to make sure your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted, or whatever that expression is to be able to go in there and to make sure that you're not going to go and get embarrassed. And that's Mm -hmm. what this kid did. And I always have to preface this, I feel like. Love him or hate him. Those are the facts on the table. And this guy's getting in there and he's putting on good performances against low-level guys, I will agree. But Mm -hmm. nonetheless, he's getting out there, he's getting the job done, and he says exactly what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. He literally said first round knockout, and that's what he got. And mm-hmm. guess what? That fight should have probably been called earlier. Yeah, Nate it, it Robinson, needed to be stopped after that first, after that second knockdown. Dude, when he's just laying there yeah. like this. I like, was like, it should be waved off right now. Well, and he clearly didn't want to continue. I mean, yes. that count was a 24 count, okay? Yes. Which I, I guess we're playing basketball now with a 24-second shot violation. But 
it, it was way longer than 10 seconds, dude. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was egregious. I'm like, dude, I get it. It's a, kind of a, like a celebrity boxing event. You want it to go longer than a round. But Nate Robinson didn't want to be there. Yeah. I mean, he got smoked. And I feel so bad for that I feel, Oh, I feel bad for him, dude, because you it's see like, all the memes? I, I don't know how long he's been training. I, I, I almost suspect, I'm not even going to Google it because it's not worth a Google. No, I don't not. give a fuck that much. I, I suspect he had zero training before this. Contract gets made. He, I'll take a few boxing lessons. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, that's just stupid. Yeah. It's really dumb. And, I, and Jake Paul's a piece of shit for taking the fight. <laughs> and no, I, see, I, a I, little dis- bit. I disagree with like, you, man. You're just going to fight of literally someone with zero with skills. I mean, that's like Michael Jordan coming up and saying, again, hey, one-on-one, you're first person to get. Now, hold on. No, you're contradicting yourself. You're literally saying that on the up I just, up, my you point fight, is, you fight potato yes, cans you do. or whatever. Yes, you do. But... but so my point is, is I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. Well, I want to see him. Fuck what you want to see or not, I want Jack. to see that's him what, fight someone with real competition do. now. I know. And that's why I don't like boxing. That. That's well, I why know, I like the, the UFC. Thing. The guys had two, pro- two professional, two, two professional fights. Yes. And like people want him to like start fighting elite competition. Mm-hmm. How, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How about, how about him, Hamzat Chemaev? Yeah. After his first one, did you want him to fight fucking... Uh, Leon Edwards? Leon Edwards, after his first win in the UFC, were you going to throw him? His first fight ever as, as a mixed martial artist, do you want to throw him uh, to Kamaru Usman? No, we threw him to, uh, what was his name? M- Reese McKee. And then after <laughs> Reese McKee, right. it was Gerald Murchart. Okay. And now it's Leon Edwards. Okay. So, I mean, but, but, but no, 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 Jake no, no. Paul's You're calling about, out Conor talking... McGregor and fucking Dylan Danis. Like, well, does he work up from Dylan Danis to Conor McGregor? I yes. guess that would be the latter. I, that would be the latter, but you would still need a few in between Dylan Danis, that fucking Jack Wagon. Well, let's be real. I think D- Jake Paul probably does knock out Dylan Danis right now. Probably. <laughs> in, in a boxing probably. match. Probably. In a boxing match. I'd love to see that. That's, that's like the one time where I think I would root for a guy like Jake Paul over <laughs> Dylan Danis. Dylan Danis is one of the most annoying human beings on the face of the planet. Again, I get what he's doing. He wants eyeballs on him, but oh god, fucking shoot me! That guy is just so annoying. <laughs> just stuck on Connor's and not seeing. Dude, time. I know it's just like, it's bad. bro. How many times have you gotten drunk and done the old sucky suck with your bro? I don't want to know, actually. Yeah, so so we know those fights are never happening. Never. No, they're not. But never. I mean, as far as Jake Paul and his performance, I mean, he looked uh, he looked great. I got to hand it to him too. Only two professional fights. And that's what you that's what you do. I mean, you just you you slaughtered the man. I guess he's fighting Kevin Durant next. I mean, who else? Kevin Durant's huge, bro. Yeah, but he'd still knock him out probably. <laughs> it's like LeBron saying, remember when people were saying like LeBron would knock out Colby Covington because Colby called out LeBron. <laughs> bro, LeBron ain't knocking out Colby Covington. No. That that guy's already got. I mean, we where's his hair? His hairline's gone. It's fucked up. It's just a low blow for no reason. LeBron's just like, no, but come on, dude. LeBron's an old man. He ain't going to take on a guy like Colby Covington. That's ridiculous. I don't even want to talk about that. Let's talk about the Mike Tyson versus Roy (laughs) Jones Jr., the main event of this uh, evening of last night. You know, Tabor, uh, I thought. You know, it it is incredible to me that Mike Tyson is 54 years old, Roy Jones Jr. is 51 years old, and they put on a performance like they did last night. I know you were of the differing opinion, but Mike Tyson, I got to say, he was the highlight here for me. Roy Mm -hmm. Jones Jr. didn't look bad. He was still moving around after round six Mm -hmm. or after round five going into the six. You know, he was very exhausted. You could see in his corner. (laughs) But again, like he was still making it an entertaining fight. He He was. was He was. He was moving. Was you know, there was, was there you know more clinching than usual? Well, a lot, yeah, a lot of clinching. Yeah, but overall, like seriously, the combinations Tyson was putting together to the body, you know, Roy Jones Jr. getting with those quick jabs, you know, those no look jabs. I thought it looked great, man. I for, for I mean, for how old they are now, is this a Tyson Fury Deontay uh, Wilder fight? No, of course not. Of course not. Let's be realistic here. But I thought it was. I I had fun with it. I really did. I mean, what what are your thoughts? I, I, I would. I guess I had, my expectations were just too high, and I might be the only person to ever say that about this fight because I, you know, they're both fifty years old, fifty-one years old. For what Roy were Jr. your expectations? I was expecting Mike Tyson to go out and knock him out. I didn't think that they'd be clinching and going to the body a whole lot and yeah, actually trying did, to drag this out. But did eight you rounds. hear the? Did you hear the rules? Yes, no but I, even Mike and his coach was saying that they weren't going to follow that shit. I know, and at it, times it did look like Mike's was throwing a few shots that could have easily knocked him out. Right, but there are a lot of shots, a lot of combinations that like all three 
uh, punches of that combo were to the body when he could have went body body up mm-hmm. and probably KO'd Roy Jones Jr. Yeah, I mean, and he chose not to. Let's be realistic. What is crazy is if you look at DraftKings, that website, Mike Tyson was a 5,000 favorite after round five. How does Can that you, work if they called it a draw? Oh, you'll lose your fucking money, Jack. <laughs> you'll lose your money. Oh, so it was a huge scam then. It was a huge scam. there was scam. no winner yeah, anyway. There was no winner. I mean, at least my understanding, because a draw you bet on individually. How the fuck does DraftKings get away with that? I don't know. You're gonna you're gonna bet on a fight where there is no winner. No, and then you have celebrity judges who and and dude, if you looked at the scorecards oh, for the dude, three that's judges, a scam. It was such a scam. One judge had it forty six forty six. The other judge had it forty nine forty three for for Tyson, and then the other one had it like fifty to forty two for. Uh, for Roy Jones Jr., I'm like, this what is so fuck? egregious and obvious that they were trying to make this a draw the whole time, which I'm fine with. That's look, a scam, look, dude. If How you, much I know, money? No, no. Billions of yes. dollars? If you didn't have to bet on the fights, if there were no betting, like, it would be one thing. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't care that it was a draw. Like, because it's not, they're not trying to, like, further their careers, and I'm fine with calling it a draw, even if it wasn't a draw. But when you got money on the line, brother, like when I, if I would have bet on that fight and they called that shit a fucking draw and I put a, you know, I put money on Mike Tyson, I would have been pissed. Well, they said it in the beginning that was part of the rules. There was no winner. And they're still allowing bets on a fight where there well, is dude, no winner. It was on the TV. Remember? That, you didn't see it on yeah, the Yeah, I know, but it's like, it's still, it's like, it's just, it's baffling. Yeah, like, it's baffling to me really that is. they can get away with that, especially. Right. right. Uh, it's pretty it's an obvious one, but back to the fight. Back to the fight. Mike Tyson, he said that he he's considering maybe another. I mean, who? Who the fuck else does he fight? Roy Jones Jr. again? <laughs> I mean, I just I don't, don't know. It was so <laughs> funny in that post fight. Tyson was like, "Hey man, we're gonna do this again. We gotta do this again." And Roy Jones was looking <laughs> he's like, "Oh hell, bro, <laughs> this was a one and done thing for yeah. me." After six rounds with you, look, man, you're a psycho, yeah. Tyson. Like, I don't want to ever do this again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I really felt like Roy Jones Jr. was thinking that. Oh, after, yeah. After that, during that post fight. Because yeah, he was he, like, hey, let's do this again. And he was like, mm, I'll I talk to he, my family. He, <laughs> he was thinking that after the fourth round, dude. He was gassed. Yeah. And, I mean, he was he was not looking like he was in the best shape. It really did look like this man was kind of coming off the couch when Mike called him. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm sure but there he, was plenty of training. that pretty jacked. Took place, I mean, he had abs. I mean, I, but I just, I got to keep going back to it, man. I mean, like, imagine 50, being true. on the other side of 50. Yeah. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, you're closer to death than you <laughs> are, you know, being alive. Like, you're on the other side of life. And the fact that they were able to go out there for six rounds is incredible. Tabor, yeah. you give you and I uh, three months apiece to train for a fight. You and I are gassed after the first 30 seconds of the first round, even though we trained for three Dude, months. Dude, I'm gassed walking out to the fucking ring. Exactly rain. my point. A little light jog, and I, I'm on, my heart is already pulpitating, <laughs> bro. I think I'm going to have a fucking heart attack. So, Yeah. Yeah, so I guess we are in awe. Yeah, of the performance they did put I on am. because it, it could have been way worse in reality. It could have been, and I, I honestly, you know, I, that is exactly what I expected, and it was fun. It was a spectacle. Uh, spectacle. It was a fun event, especially like with this lockdown and stuff. I got to give them props. I'm glad that they went out and just did it because it was a fun Saturday night for me. You know, we had a fun fight companion. Mm-hmm. We were talking. Luckily for us, we had the podcast. You know, in between the hour of whatever the concerts, we just heard, saw some guy scream blood, 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 blood. <laughs> I know those were so crazy. My red rag, red rag, red rag, and I'm like, what, what? Like we were reading subtitles and I'm like, okay, whatever. We're, we'll <laughs> go back to the conversation. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it was a spectacle. It was fun. And uh, my hat's off for both of them to going in there and doing that at their age, man. Yeah. That's not easy. Yeah. And shout out to Israel Sada, my guy. I'm Israel yeah. Asada. Israel Asada. Asada. <laughs> yeah. Israel Adesanya. Commentating. Yeah. Commentating. Yeah. Shout out to him. So yeah. it's big, big deal for the UFC community. Okay. Let's get to some actual. MMA news. Let's do it. So we did talk about the main event of UFC 256 last week a little bit. It wasn't confirmed quite yet that Figueredo was fighting Moreno. We did right. speculate that it was going to happen. It is confirmed 100% that fight is happening. At UFC 256, December yes. 12th, in replacement for the Aljamain Sterling, Petr Jan, uh, bantamweight title fight that just got pulled. Yeah, so just, I mean, shout outs to Figueredo, I guess, because nobody's ever done this. 
headline two pay per views back, back to, to back. back. I don't think it's even anyone's ever been close. Yeah, but I mean, when you're as which you're right, props to him, exact, totally, absolutely. But I mean, when you're as dominant as a guy like Figueredo, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, I'm yeah, fine. fuck it, sure, take why not? I'll it. take Brandon Moreno because, like, I really believe Figueredo. And I again, no disrespect to Brandon Moreno, but I think he looks at, at Brandon Moreno and is like, yeah, I can take this guy in six weeks. Yeah. Like, I really do. I don't think... I think Brandon Moreno is a great fighter. I think in any other circumstance, he may be a champion. But not with a guy like Figueredo at this division. Like, I think I think Figueredo steamrolls Brandon Moreno. Really? I really do. I well, think he's the most dangerous guy in, in the flyweight division. Really? That's an actual contender. Yeah. Well, I think Brandon Moreno should have been the first guy over Alex Perez anyway. I mean, Alex mm-hmm. Perez... Don't, hey, look, uh, against Formiga, those leg kicks in the first round, I mean, literally took him out, made him quit, but... Mm-hmm. Or made him tap, whatever. But, you know, uh, Brendan Moreno should have been the guy to fight uh, Figueredo first. So this is the matchup we wanted to see, and this is the fight that uh, Brendan Moreno deserves. So I'm glad he's getting it. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And he was really offended that he didn't even he didn't even get considered the first time. Before it was even Cody Garbrandt. Yeah, it was Cody. And, and let's be real. If Cody Garbrandt is still planning on getting down to 125, I don't know how he's going to do it. He's having so many fucking body issues right now. He put out an Instagram video earlier saying, yeah, you know, I had this, and then I had that, and then my liver shut down, my kidneys were all fucked up, and I went and stayed in the hospital for three yeah, days. like, what are you But, you know, I'm do? fine, man. I'm coming back. I'm fucking going to make it. I'm getting that fucking gold. Fuck that lemon head, motherfucker. Yeah, but, you know, once I get all of my blood tests back and shit, and it's like, dude, how your about body this? is breaking down on you right how now. How about this? How about you drop, how about Cody Garbrandt drops the whole flyweight thing? Yes. Well, let's do this. This sounds like fun to me, right? TJ Dillashaw is coming back <laughs> in January. Time. Let's do that fight at Bantamweight for his, for his inaugural coming back after being a cheater. That's going to sell. I don't care who you are. That's going to sell. I know Cody lost twice. He got knocked out twice. I get it. I get it. I understand. Yeah, and the second time was more decisive. It was decisive. worse. Yeah. yeah. But... Imagine the promo that you can cut for that being like, oh, this motherfucker was cheating. He's a cheater. So really, it's 1-0. So it's like basically a rubber match. Like, I could imagine all the shit talk that they would they would go back and forth and calling mm-hmm. him a snake. And I think that would be a lot of fun. I The reason why I bring that up is basically because I don't want to see Cody Garbrandt drop down to 125. I don't want to see him hurt his, his potential future because he is a contender in the Bantamweight division as it sits right now. And I just don't want to see him drop down to flyweight and risk his career the same way. I mean, like, take notes from a guy like TJ Dillashaw. Yes. He had to literally take EPOs and be a cheater for the rest of his fucking life just to take on that fight against Henry Cejudo. I don't want to see that. It's not I necessary. I don't want to see that. It's not. It's 110% not necessary. Yeah, absolutely. Another main event did fall out, Mason. Yeah, this is crazy. And it's the one for this weekend. We're about to talk about it in our preview show, but there is one other thing we got to talk about. Kevin Holland fell out of the Jack Hermanson fight. Yeah. He uh, got replaced by Marvin Vittori, so it is Vittori and Hermanson we will be talking about here in a minute. But he is set up for December 12th. Yeah, he's, he's on, be that on that fight UFC card. 256 card. Jacare Souza. Oh, my goodness. They're trying to test his jiu-jits right off the bat. Yeah. I mean, first is Jack Hermanson, which is, I mean, Jesus, like, that's a test on right. the ground, my guy. And now Jacare Souza, literally one of the greatest Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys we've ever seen. Like, okay. <laughs> What are you trying to do, Dana White? Trying you know, to fuck my guy's knee up? I know, right? I, I think uh, Vittori got a little bit of an upgrade here, though. Absolutely, dude. <laughs> I mean, number four in the world from yeah. what? Fucking I know, like a top 10 fight, maybe? Yeah. Uh, I don't even know. Jacare Souza is not even on the top 15. Wait, what? No, he's not. No way. Yeah, he's really not. Um but yeah, I mean, Marvin Vittori, I guess his fight makes more sense in general because he is the 13th ranked in the world. So a 13th rank taking on Jack Hermanson would probably be better than a guy like Kevin Holland. Granted, he's won, what, four times already this year, uh, taking on a guy like Jacques Ray Souza. And I think Jacques Ray is a great test for Kevin Holland. I mean, all things considering with this crappy COVID-19 situation and him testing positive and had to pull out, I think this is the best case scenario for him. I mean, able to get a quick fight at UFC 256 against Jacques Ray Souza, that's the perfect replacement. The fact I like that, how they did that. Yeah, well, he's a, it's a beautiful replacement. It's it going to be a great fight, and I'm very excited for it. But the fact that Jacques Ray Souza isn't ranked in this middleweight division right now is really weird. I find that really weird. Yeah, he did move up to 205 and take that Jan Blockowicz fight, which it was a terrible fight, yes, but, like, come on, you couldn't have kept him in? Couldn't have kept him in a little bit longer? Which is weird. Just weird, in my opinion. But 
Well, and, and here's the thing. I mean, he already fought Jack Hermanson and lost Jack Hermanson back in 2019. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't use him as a replacement for Jack Hermanson. No, I'm talking... Uh, just I'm, talking the, what, I'm just wondering why uh, he's not ranked still. Even oh, though he only I took that one saying. fight at 205, right. he should still be ranked in my opinion. I mean, you got Chris Weidman and, and Uriah Hall at 10 and 9. Yeah. Jock Ray shows there should be right in there. He should be maybe right above Derek Brunson, maybe behind a Darren Till or something like that, right at 7 or something. Either way, I think it is time, Mason. Preview show time. I mean, is it is it the most exciting card ever? No. No, unfortunately. But we're working into that. And they decided to take December 19th and elevate that to whole new ridiculous levels. So now we're getting cards like this where you have Marab Devalishvili versus opponent TBA. Yeah, which is so unfortunate. I really wish, you know, I am getting sick and tired. I don't know what it is because Matt Sarah has got a great relationship with Dana White. And I think overall, and I say this all the time on this podcast, I think Dana White's brilliant. I think he's a wonderful UFC president. And I think he's done so much for the company. But what I will never understand is why he doesn't... uh, he just doesn't take guys like Marab or Aljamain Sterling, you know, coming out of the same camp with Matt Sarah, And, and uh, I just feel like they kind of always get shafted. You know, like Marab deserves like a top five opponent. Yeah. Like I really believe that. Like Marab is fucking good and he's dominant. I mean, he had like 14 takedowns in the fight before the last one and then like 11 takedowns in the other prior. He looked incredible against D- John Dodson. Like, mm-hmm. I just don't understand why they're not, like, they're kind of just throwing guys at him last minute. You know, these guys that may be on the up and up or whatever, but not, like, taking Marab very seriously. I wish they would. I really wish they would. I hate I hate these last minute, like, fights. I yeah, really and, and who knows if it's going to be a ranked opponent. It can mean, Probably it really won't could be. be anybody. Not if, it's in, not if it's, like, TBA, you know, a week out. Yeah, like and, and, he, and he deserves a high ranked opponent. He I does. mean, the year he has had this year is just un- ridiculous. Yeah. And the dominance he's showing. So he really deserves a top five guy. Who knows if he will get it. I mean, if we're doing it last second, I mean, we're a week out of this fight. Six days out. So, I mean, this fight might have to happen at 145. Who knows who it's going to be. But let's talk about this main event, Mason. So we just talked about it. Jack Hermanson versus Marvin Vittori is now the main event because Kevin Holland dropped out. Yes, it is. I mean, I feel like this is almost the same type of fight. So I'm not shocked that Jack Hermanson took this fight. Marvin Vittori is a striker, and he wants to keep it on the feet. Jack Hermanson is a brilliant jiu-jitsu practitioner. He's a great wrestler as well. But he's not scared to stay on the feet with a guy like Marvin Vittori, I think. So well, in this Marvin, is an interesting matchup. Marvin, say what you will, but Marvin Vittori has... Um, has improved his ground game. I mean, you look at his yeah. last fight against Carl Roberson. You know, he submitted him in the first round. So it's like, you know, he is getting better everywhere. And yes, of course, you're absolutely right. Marvin Marvin Vittori wants to stand and bang. Like, he mm-hmm. doesn't want to go to the ground. But it is an interesting matchup in this perspective of having Jack Hermanson as, as that guy who's probably going to beat you on the ground. We'll see how well Marvin Vittori does if he gets taken down. But I got to be honest with you, I think, I think this fight's going to stand. I think I think really? we're three. Uh, yeah, I, I think we're going to see a war. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that actually shocks me because that's the exact opposite of what I think is going to happen. I really do see Jack trying to take this down to the ground and trying to implement his jujitsu game. I mean, the way he submitted Kelvin Gastelum that quickly with that heel hook. That was disgusting. I mean, he's just too dangerous of a jujitsu guy. Why stand with a guy like Marvin Vittori who can knock you out? He's a very, very big 185 pounder. He's cutting a lot of weight to make it. So Jack, you know, if his, I really feel like his keys to success are on the ground and he needs to get a submission. I mean, I don't think he needs to, he can win on the feet against Marvin Vittori. Maybe if he takes him in the later rounds, starts to get him the gas, beats him up in the fourth and fifth, it could happen. But I just, I think really his keys to success here are going down to the ground. So I see Jack Hermanson um, submitting Marvin Vittori in the second round, actually. Wow. I don't know how. It could be, you know, rear naked choke. It could be heel hook. Who knows? Okay. I wouldn't be shocked if Jack fucking Inari rolled him. Like, it just shocked us and pulled a, a Ryan Hall. Well, this is what I have, and I could be completely wrong. Uh, I think uh, people uh, people underestimate Jack Hermanson when it comes on the feet. Like, this guy could also knock people out. Yeah, he's, yeah. A, great, he's a great submission artist. Yeah. But 
at the same time, like he has power in his hands, and I think he's going to surprise Vittori. You know, obviously with his late uh, late late second uh, replacement, I think he's going to go out there. I think he's going to KO Vittori in the first round. Really, so I have Jack Hermanson KO first round. Wow, that would be shocking. That would really be shocking. It'd be fun. It would be fun. <laughs> It'd be a really really fun fight. All right, co-main event, Mason. We have Ovin Saint Peru. Once again, fighting. I think this is third or, fr- third or fourth fight this year. So, f- shit. Congratulations to him. Another big year for him. Yeah. Versus an undefeated fighter in Jamal Hill. He's had two fights in the UFC thus far. Yeah. And, and it doesn't matter when you got these young undefeated guys. They love giving them these OG vets like an OSP. This is a big test for Jamal Hill. And Jamal Hill is no joke on the feet. He's a very, very good striker, as the undefeated record will show. So I don't I don't really know how this fight plays out. I think this fight is gonna be a war. I see maybe both men barely having advantages maybe on the feet. I, I I think OSP obviously has the advantage on the ground here, but if Jamal Hill's takedown defense is good enough and it can stay up on the feet, I do think Jamal Hill might be a little bit faster, might have a little bit crisper shots, might be the better counter striker. So I'm going to go Jamal Hill, unanimous decision. Wow, okay. Um, I like an undefeated fighter. Ovin St. Peru, you know, he didn't look bad in his last fight. He did lose to Ben Rothwell uh, uh, when he went up to heavyweight. But the thing is with Ovin St. Peru, yeah, his last fight, you know, we had always talked about him being gun shy and not really pulling the trigger. I thought Ovin St. Peru looked really good in his last fight. Uh, I was very impressed with him. So I'm actually going to switch my pick. I'm going to go Ovin St. Peru. I'm going to go decision. Okay. Yeah, I do see this round. I don't I don't see either man really being able to finish each other. Jamal Hill's had a couple decisions as of late. He has had knockouts in the past, but I just don't see him being able to finish an OSP. I do think this goes all three rounds. All right, we'll be able to talk about this one pretty pretty uh, quickly. Marab versus anyone. I'm picking Marab. Unanimous decision. I absolutely do. Really, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it, doesn't. it doesn't matter who he fights. I mean, he's just so good. Yes. His wrestling is so dominant. He could take anybody down, really, in this division right now. I'd love to see him maybe against a Rafael Asanso. That's the fight I want to see. That's a big name. If he gets a win over that big name, he's going to be clamor for a number one contender fight, and that's what he deserves over a win against Rafael Asanza. Yeah, I really I really agree with that uh, statement, Tabor. Yeah. So let's talk about Montana de La Rosa versus Talia Santos. Talia Santos is not a girl that I know very well. She's got a fantastic record, though. She has a fantastic record. She was a girl who beat uh, Molly uh, Meatball McCann mm. uh, back in July 15th uh, via decision. Uh, she did have a loss against Mara, uh, Mara Romero Barella. I remember that fight yeah, back and, in February. And De La Rosa has a, has a victory over Mara Morella Barella. So, mm. you know, it could be... A little bit of, you know, I mean, the odds here have Santos as a favorite, but that could just be a little bit of a reflection on the record. Montela de Rosa it does have an 11-6 record, but she is a very, very good jiu-jitsu practitioner. And Talia Santos in the fights that I've seen, you know, just a very little research I have done into her, she seems like a striker, and she's going to want to keep it on the feet. Montana, she has been outstruck in the past, so this fight does make me a little nervous for her, but... If Montana De La Rosa goes down to the ground, you're probably either getting submitted or just ground into the mat for three rounds. So I'm just going De La Rosa, unanimous decision. We're going to see if Talia Santos can hang with a pretty elite jiu-jitsu girl in this 125-pound division. All right. Uh, I am going to go a Santos decision. All right. I don't even know how to pronounce this name. Roman Roman Dolids. 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 Dolides. Dolides. Delights, Roman Delights versus John Allen. I'm just calling him Roman. That's fine. That's a better name. Roman. Roman versus John Allen. John Allen is a guy I've never heard of. And when I looked up his record, it seems like he hasn't fought since mid-2019. I don't know what the layoff was for. Maybe it was injury or other reason, personal reason, who knows. But he is fighting a fucking savage in his comeback fight, Roman Deladze, or whatever the fuck his name is, is very good and a very dangerous striker. He's coming off a four-fight KO streak, and he's 7-0. and So this is a very dangerous fight. This is a big 205-er, both two big 205-ers. This is going to be a war. Possible Magomed and Clive Kutalaba fight. So 
I'm very excited for this fight. We're going to see a 7-0 and fighter, upcoming guy, versus a guy who is a little bit established in this 205 division, but has taken some time off. So ring rust could be a factor. I'm going Roman Deladze, or whatever his name is, first round KO. Perfect. I am going, uh, I'm also picking Deladze, uh, third round TKO. All right, Nate the Train Landmere. I have no idea if I said that last name right either. God, these fucking names are Land killing Weir. me. Land, yeah. Landwire. Landwire. Versus you got to say it with a southern Evaloyev. accent. He's a southern, he's a southern boy. Ovalayev. Ivalayev. Ivalayev. Yeah. No. A Russian guy. No, another Russian wrestler. Don't have enough of those. There's only a million of them right now. And they're going to dominate the UFC for years to come. So get ready for your Russian <laughs> overlords, everybody. Because they're all going for double legs. Absolutely. <laughs> The Russians invade, just everyone's double leg enough. All right. <laughs> that's how they take that's over the world. Just they double just double leg everyone. everyone. Just we just can't do anything there. about it. They just smother us. God, I mean, that's the most scary th- thought I could it think of. Can you imagine scary. just Dagestanis coming out of the woodwork, just fucking start double legging you? No, be crazy. No. Yeah, this guy isn't Dagestani, but he is a, a crazy Russian wrestler. And he's very, very good on the ground. His wrestling is next level. Every fight I've seen of this guy, he's just taking people down, but he can strike, and he's very good at blending the strikes in with the takedown attempts. Nate Landwehr, this is a very dangerous fight for this guy. He is making his, I mean, I think he's had a couple fights in the UFC so far. He has found some success, but this is a big, big test for him. 13-0. I'm going with the Russian, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. His just is his wrestling is probably going to be too much. This is going to be a rough fight for Nate Landwehr, unfortunately. That's my opinion. I am going, um, Ev- Evalev, unanimous decision. All right. Well, I have uh, the same pick, except I'm going to go uh, Movsar Evliolev. <laughs> First round. Oh, sub. we're murdering it, dude. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're, we're, we're crushing it. it. Yeah, yeah. Before we end this show. It is that time, but there is something that I realized a few minutes ago, and we cannot end this podcast without talking about it, Mason. So, MMA News, uh, what do you call this? Extra credit? Sure, extra credit. MMA News, extra credit. We're getting that in at the end. You guys are lucky today. I forgot his name. (laughs) Hamzat Chemaev. I'm just joking. Oh, there we go. Okay. (laughs) Hamzat. Hamzat Chemaev. Hamzat Chemaev. Hamza. Unfortunately, it seems like he had a positive COVID test. No! Yeah. Yeah, this fight's in jeopardy, dude. That's Fuck. what they're saying, but it isn't canceled. They haven't said anything. Maybe they're waiting for more tests. It could be a false positive. I don't trust these fucking tests. Who knows? Elon Musk said he had four tests in a week the other day. Two came back negative. Two came back positive. He says he has no idea what the fuck to believe. Who knows? I don't know what to believe. Who knows? Maybe they, they just got to keep testing. Yeah, just keep, keep testing, testing until, until, he's he's a, gets, until he gets until negative. He's got a negative. This fight needs then, to stay on, dude. We're yeah. only a few weeks out. This is the biggest fight card of the year. They don't want to lose this main event. Does Leon Edwards take a fight if this falls through? No, of course not. Dude, he fucking better. <laughs> he fucking better. You take that Wonder Boy fight. You take that fucking Jeff Neal fight. All right, you well, take the if, Michelle Pereira fight. I don't. What if they fuck. don't want to fight short notice? Those three fighters. Just anyone? Like, Leon Edwards should just take on anyone? Anyone. Wow. GSP comes out of the fucking audience. I don't know like, why he would. I'm ready for this performance. I'm not impressed by your performance. That's what he's going to say to fucking Leon, right? As he's <laughs> taking him down. <laughs> fucking him up. Oh, man. No. He needs to take a fight, dude. If this fight falls through, he needs to take that Wonder Boy fight. Wonder Boy wanted that fight originally. It didn't happen. They had to pressure Leon into this Hamzat Chimaev fight, and it worked. Remember, they took him out of the rankings, so they have to do something. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm just going to hope and and pray to the MMA gods that this fight doesn't fall through because it's the one I'm most looking forward to. But that fight card is ridiculously stacked, so I guess if it does fall off, whatever. Jeff Neal. So we, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson for five rounds. I'm cool with that. Yeah, too, I'm I fine guess. with that. But I'm still going to be a little salty. So shout outs, Mason. Shout outs. Uh, my shout out is the guy that I shouted out earlier, uh, Logan Knight. I'm a little biased. He's my brother. But uh, he is the videographer for Brock Murray's channel that I have shouted out on this podcast before. Uh, we just want to thank him for coming on the podcast and uh, being a part of the Fight Companion. We had a lot of fun. That Fight Companion you can find now on our YouTube channel until it gets banned probably. And then Apple and Spotify, all that fun stuff. Yeah, and uh, I have to apologize to him directly on this podcast because I did set him up terribly in the beginning. 
I was like, yeah, so you were just telling me how you got caught in Victoria's Secret is recording people. So explain that story. <laughs> you know, so Tabor, you have a way it. with words. You have a way with words. <laughs> Uh, I felt bad afterwards, oh, yeah. but it was funny, it was and I funny. did do it on purpose. You did. <laughs> uh, okay, so oh, hold on, hold oh, on, stop oh, it, stop it. it. Oh, stop it. Comment section. My shout out is to a commenter, YouTube commenter, Jake G. It's very long. I'm just gonna read a small section of it. Uh, Chandler talks so highly on being ready to fight and take any chances they give him, and he had no right to turn that fight down. And word is he was in the middle of training camp when he turned it down. Makes matters even worse. He was like the other bozo trying to get clout, having a co- Tony's name. Okay, not a Michael Chandler fan. Neither was I last week, and I gotta apologize to him because I did go on a rant and it wasn't needed. But you know what? I guess even extra, 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 extra credit MMA news. Dana White did talk about Michael Chandler in the press conference. Did he? What do yeah. you have to say? He said that, uh, it was, it was along the line of as we have plans for Michael Chandler and, uh, we're not going to say anything. And so I think Michael Chandler in, in his defense, I don't think he ever got offered anything. So I can't, I don't think we could say that, uh, he turned down Tony. Well, I was team Chandler. Because yeah. I, I, I had realized that, man. Like, and then with the with double weight cuts and stuff, like, I figured the UFC didn't even offer him. And I think fight. they really want him on this Conor McGregor fard. Yeah, it, probably. And, and, it's, and it's looking like it might be a Justin Gaethje, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. I, don't think, I still is, don't I, think he deserves it. I called that. If it is yeah. Gaethje, I did call that. So, in all fairness. Yeah, absolutely. Start that shit, Mason. Twitter, is. Facebook, Instagram, at the Church of MMA. Guys, if you are following us already, go and do it. We're posting funny memes. We're trying to make you laugh. Hit us up. Check out our YouTube channel, too. We're at 365 subscribers. We would really like to hit that big 500 before the end of the year. We thank you guys so much for watching and listening. This is the Church of MMA. My name is Mason Knight. That is Tabor Cragen. And until next time. Peace.